we did four four million five hundred thousand page views last year, and, and this year we're set to do six million. The only way I've actually achieved real success was to bring my focus down onto one project. Your life could go one of two ways. I call them sliding doors moments after the movie. Based on that one decision, your whole life changes. Deep down inside, I'm Batman. And my Batcave is SBI. My Batmobile is my laptop. And that's the way to be successful. I'm the owner of a website called sellmycomicbooks.com. It's actually the world's leading website for free comic book appraisals online. Started that website in 2012. So when did you actually become a potential online business owner? Let's get that context going first. Well, it was back in May 2005, actually. Um, I interviewed uh, Ken Evoy, as most people know who he is. Uh, I interviewed him for the local paper because his daughter... Uh, was making a website about selling their family home in the town I was living in, in Hudson, Quebec. And my local newspaper editor asked me to write an article interviewing them about the project because it's kind of unusual. So that's how I, I found out about SBI. And being the cheeky freelance that I was, I said to Ken while I was on the phone, well, maybe you need someone like me to do some articles for you. And then got upsold because he said, well, you can't <laughs> write about SBI unless you've actually used SBI. So I was thinking... What have I got myself into here? That's a great story. Not everybody has that kind of experience, but in a sense, there is a similarity between that and everybody else because there is a spark. You know, there's going to be something that really resonates inside um, a potential online business owner that goes, wow, this is really something for me. And I presume that happened for you. Yeah, really. I, 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 it's one of those weird um, moments where your life could go one of two ways. I call them sliding doors moments after the movie, um, where you decide to do one thing or the other thing. And, and based on that one decision, your whole life changes. So at that point, I was actually uh, a professional internet poker player. And I'd thought about blogging for a while and or building a website for a while. And, and it just seemed like the, the technical challenges were just in my head, at least they were insurmountable. I think in those days, I'm not even sure if uh, WordPress existed, but maybe even if it did, it wasn't as easy to use as it is now. And so, uh, as I often do, actually, uh, a new project becomes daunting because I don't know what to do first. And then um, when Ken mentioned SBI and, and I started reading the action guide, I realized, hey, there, there's a process to follow and I think I can do this. And so that's, that's, that's that sliding doors moment and that's brought me to where I am today. It's interesting because you talk about the action guide and, and just about anybody who is a, a current you know, client will talk about the action guide as a context that really enables them to build a successful business. You know, and really you can often tell the successful businesses from those that aren't and go back and trace the fact that they didn't follow the action guide. Just so that we understand a little bit about it, could you explain what it is and, and maybe even what the impact of it was for you? Sure, absolutely. So the action guide is a, a they call it a 10 day process. Uh, so day one is basically brainstorming ideas that you, you know, what, what makes you passionate? What, what is burning inside you? What do you really want to share with the world? And, and what can you offer? What, what value can you bring to the internet was basically what a business is you bring value. Uh, the action guide also before you even get to day one makes it very clear. You're not building a website, you're building a web business. And I think anyone who's considering SBI should start from that point. I, I want to build a business. The website is just, it's just the way the business works. The same way as opening a dry cleaners is, uh, is the same way it works. You need, a, you need a location, you need all those machines and all the chemicals and stuff to dry clean clothes. Well, it, having a website is just part of the process of having an online business. So the action guide starts you on day one, which is brainstorming ideas and, and then testing those ideas using numbers. And uh, that, that may sound complicated, but the tools they provide are very, very straightforward. Uh, and so by day four or day five, I can't remember because it's been a while, uh, you get to the point where you decide which of your projects is going to be the most likely to succeed. And there's some art there and some science, because although the numbers may be pointing you in one direction, the action guide also says, be careful you don't choose something just based on numbers that your heart isn't in. 
because you will not see that through. No matter how profitable the project might be, you're going to fall by the wayside. And that's another th another reason that people fail because they choose a project that seems like a, a winner on paper, but maybe isn't isn't what really makes them passionate. Does that mean that SBI isn't for everybody in your experience? SBI is not for everybody the same way that building any kind of business is for everybody. And uh, I think that when you take somebody who maybe, maybe has uh, an instinct for business, but then comes to the technological challenges, SBI makes it as simple as possible. Um, I want to talk a little bit later about how to get past that barrier because I found that my growth um, in SBI and online in general uh, was exponentially increased when I started outsourcing stuff to people that I didn't like doing or couldn't do on my own. Yep, we're definitely going to cover that. Yep. I think it's important to, to emphasize that because uh, a lot of people want to bootstrap that, that whole idea of never spending money, doing everything for free. And, and I found that more time has been wasted in that, in that way than by any other mistake I've made over the years. We're, we're definitely going to spend time uh, focusing on the developments of your business because I'm actually particularly interested in that very specific point. One of the things that leads into that for me is that, you know, we're talking about sellmycomicbooks.com. What I'm interested in knowing is, is that been your only journey? You talked about the poker in the early days. That's, is that still a site that, that goes on? Did you try other things? I'm interested more than anything about the level of focus it took for you to develop a, a solid business. Okay, well, as, as I progressed through the SBI um, world, um, what I found was I was so greedy for experience and, and I, I was so convinced that I was talented enough to do more than one thing at once. That I had multiple sites. And of course, if you have more than one thing going on, you're dragged in one direction and dragged in another direction. And the only way I've actually achieved real success was to bring my focus down onto one project. I know that in an uh, earlier case study that is documented on the uh, SBI site, you had actually talked about lots of mistakes that you'd made and, you know, in the early days. Is this one of them? Too many, too many fingers in too many pies? Yeah, especially because my first son was born around the time I started my first SBI site. And within two years, we also had twins. So um, I had a lot of, of stuff going on in my personal life. And having, five, I believe it was five SBI sites at that point was just too much for me and pretty much for anybody. So yeah, that's one of the mistakes I would, I would definitely warn people away from. Now, I would like to say something about investing in sites which have an established track record of traffic and income. That's something totally different and that's a management question. But building something from scratch, I wouldn't ever do that again. I would always focus on one project at a time. So let's let's talk about you know really the current focus of, of this interview being sellmycomicbooks.com and what I'm interested about is when you first started did you go oh I'm going to start a really massive business here or was it an idea that you would develop and spend a little bit of time given that you had all these other sites and and slowly grow or, you know did you have a, a plan if you like around it. Okay, so, so this has got to be one of the worst how I came here stories that you'll ever hear. So <laughs> Ken Evoy, one of the things he writes about very often is ignore the noise from outside the, the community when he kind of ring fences us in and says, okay, if something big is happening, we'll check it out for you and let you know when it's time. Much the way they did with the secure website thing. Uh, and, and then, so I basically said to myself, okay, I've got to a certain level and I was hanging out at conferences and hanging out online. And a lot of them would say to me, you know, there's, Ken's great, but there's, there's so much limitation. He kind of blinkers everybody. And there's so much more out there that you don't even know about. So, um, so I started exploring and I got onto some mailing lists and I got some of those get rich quick emails. And one of them got me excited because my friend Robert said, oh, you know, apps are really big right now. And it'd be great if you could maybe bring some of your web experience to an app. And so I signed up for this, pro this program. Uh, I think it was $1,000 a year or something to, to have access to a, an app building tool. 
And one of the first apps I created was a, an app about comic book investing. Now, I like to joke that I made literally several dollars a month doing this. So at one point, I think I think I got to about 20 bucks a month doing the apps full time. It was ridiculous. But what it did inadvertently was make me remember my my passion for comic books, which I cast aside over the years because of moving from England to Canada and selling everything and, and downsizing and so on. Um, now, you know, I always like to joke that Batman's very close to my heart and, uh, I, I still had that deep down love of, of comic books and, and building that app made me think about it again. And I was thinking, wow, I wonder if I bring the skills I've learned from SBI to my love of comic books, there's a business there. So, uh, instead of doing the smart thing, what I actually did was I went on to Craigslist and eBay and started buying collections to break down. And I lost, I think I lost $30,000 in my first year of trading because I, I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't experienced enough to be doing the buying and selling thing yet. I hadn't handled comic books in, in a major way since I was about 21 years old. So I, I'd lost that feel of, of how to grade a comic book. I needed help. Basically, what I'm saying is I was, I was a bit lost. So um, at the same time, what I found was I was swimming in, with sharks in a, in a very small pool. So living in Montreal, there are maybe 10 comic book dealers that have kind of resources to buy good collections. And the same 10 dealers swirling around the odd collection that came up on Craigslist. So I was competing for a few collections with a lot of people. So then the penny dropped and I said to myself, well, if only I had the skills to build a website that would create, <laughs> that would bring collections from all over the world to me instead of me doing what everyone else is doing. You know, one of the best rules for success in any business is don't do what everyone else is doing if you want to stand out. Do something a little different. What a so, concept. Yeah, exactly. So, so back in October 2012, I said to myself, okay, I'm going to start building this website, sellmycomicbooks.com, and uh, if effectively reverse the problem. So instead of waiting for people to post their collections online and then jumping on them, I would post information online for people that had a comic book collection and wait for them to jump on my information. Very good. So really, there was a strategy once you kind of got hold of the idea. Yeah, I, I kind of got tired of losing money and I got tired of, of the, the grind. At one point, I was researching how to have multiple Craigslist accounts in different states. So, you know, because you're only allowed to be in one place on Craigslist. I don't know if people know that, but um, so I had 50 Craigslist accounts. So I was posting wanted ads in 50 different states. It was just, it was ridiculous the amount of time I was spending chasing comics. I was like, why aren't comics chasing me? And and so I realized that um, there was there was a need the other thing about business is you need to, to, to find a need, identify a need or a problem that someone else has. If you want to get wealthy, you help other people solve their problems. And that, that for me was obvious. Like, like if you have a comic book collection, it's not necessarily a collection you've assembled. Maybe Uncle Charlie just died and left you his house and in the basement there was a collection of comic books. Maybe... Uh, you went to a, an estate sale and picked up a collection, you know, took a gamble on it. And now you have this comic book collection. You've no idea what to do with it. And, and that's the problem. So for somebody listening that's just starting out, really considering building an online business, when did you know that you had a business? That's a fantastic question. Really, uh, <laughs> I'm going to answer it in a different way to the way you phrased it. So there is a lot of faith at the beginning of the process. You have to just basically put energy into uh, a, a void and trust that the process is going to work. It helped that I'd done this before. It wasn't my first time. For first timers, I can only advise you, be careful that you follow the guide exactly. Don't try and cheat, take shortcuts, ignore uh, the advice that you're given actually believe that the people writing the action guide have experience and they want you to succeed uh, but you aren't going to know until you start getting traffic i mean traffic is basically how we we start to identify success in this business uh, and so i would say that the first six months of of, of my time on this and it wasn't a full-time gig 
the first six months were well, well they're tough you're building something from zero so I think I after six months I had maybe a hundred visitors a day which is considered to be the the base camp and so I think to answer your question the way you actually asked it uh, the first big collection that came in uh, through my form collection, uh, lead collection form, that was it. Like it was in Vancouver actually, and I still remember that collection. It was it was dog rough. The the comics have been really really read to death. There's a picture of me uh, somewhere holding a copy of the Incredible Hulk number one, which is still cool. I don't care what condition it's in. It's still cool to orig- have an original copy of Hulk number one from 1962. It had been torn. Through. All 36 pages have been torn through in the past and re, re, um, fixed with, with scotch tape. It was dirty. It was creased. It was basically barely recognizable as a comic book. But it was lucky for me that it was in that condition and the whole collection was like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to afford it. But for me, that, I think, is the first time I realized I'm onto something here. This is a big collection and I actually bought it. I I bought it from Vancouver. It's the other side of the country. There was a dealer sitting in Vancouver with an ad in the yellow pages that should have got that. But no, I got it. So this is when I know this is working. And, you know, it, really, it also goes to your credibility, the, the, the online credibility that somebody who found your site through whatever means, I presume it was organic free traffic, whoever mm-hmm. found your site went, this bloke is serious i'm i'm going to talk to him yeah so so i guess i created enough credibility with the articles i published and and now we have i mean we didn't do it at the time because we didn't have any customers but now we have testimonials online and uh, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody who writes to me even the people with the stuff i just say it's garage sale stuff if they write back to me to say thank you for your time i have an automated email that goes back to say thank you please post on my website a little comment. So that that comments page is like a testimonials page that's constantly updating. And Google loves interaction on your website. Google loves it if if someone comes back to your site more than once, and especially if they actually do something, they take an action on your site. So encouraging that, uh, in a sense, creates uh, authority with Google, which is the first authority you should care about because once Google thinks you're an authority, others will come because Google will send you more traffic. That's right. So you've really opened the door now to uh, this conversation about how you've expanded and and the the lessons that you can share with us about growing the business and not trying to do it all yourself. Is the best place to start overwhelm or an inspired idea that there were things that you could give to somebody else to do? Or was there some other sort of momentary light bulb flash that said i need help yeah um it's funny because this this project isn't probably the best example of that because there's not much for other people to do initially anyway uh you know, i'm just trying to think of a of a of an example to, to explain what i'm talking about so so there are many um business models on, on the web which involve selling information And so if you want to sell information, you have to be professional. You need to have a cart checkout process that that gives uh, a sense of of trust and safety. You need to have well-designed products that you're selling. You need to to have well-written sales copy. And, And for somebody who's building a site that revolves around that, you need more help because there's no way most people have all the skills they need and the time they need to put all that together. But for me, what what actually happened was um, my wife and I uh, were featured on a TV show because she was doing mosaics in the house and we had little kids and bits of glass sometimes would get in people's feet. And she was contacted by somebody, a friend of a friend, to say they're doing a TV show on a makeover and they want to do, they'll feature her because she's kind of cute and because it's a nice story. I work from home. I, I have a different job. I have a kind of weird lifestyle. And so what happened was they built a, a studio for her in the back garden in a shed. They, they, re- they converted a shed into a studio, and I basically took it over. As soon as the comic book thing started to roll, where were the comics going to go? We had nowhere else to put them, so they started invading her studio. So she went from this, I don't know, 50, 80 square foot studio to 40 square feet because I boxed it all in, and then 20 square feet because I boxed that part in, and eventually I realized I, I've, I've taken over. And 
and it got to the point where I thought to myself, I'm never going to get to sell all these. I, what am I going to do? You know, I, I'm running out of, of space to store them and I'm running out of energy because there's only 24 hours in a day and I have to sleep some of the time. And, and so, you know, I was buying the stuff online. I was building the website and adding articles to the website. I was marketing those articles. I was receiving stuff in the mail. I was unpacking that. I was storing it, then scanning all of it, putting it on eBay and packing all those shipments, sending them off at the post office. It was, I was doing six people's work and, and there's only, you can only sustain that for so long. Um, so, so that's when I realized this has got to change. Either I need to change my business model or I need to change my business practice. Right. So, so then so often when somebody has been a, if you like a solo entrepreneur for a long time, um, it becomes ingrained, you know, despite the fact that you run ragged, you're still instinctively know what to do because it's all sort of in your DNA. Mm -hmm. How did you start to translate some of this work for somebody else to be able to take off your shoulders? Well, I started by training my wife to help out. Um, and, and of course with young children and, and other problems to deal with everyday problems, you know, money and, uh, cooking and all that stuff there's only so many hours that she could contribute and then so i thought okay well maybe the answer is to hire somebody so we we got a couple of uh, interns in during the summer when when college students were available um didn't pay them very much tried that route but then they're not invested in the project uh, and so it was actually just a blind chance that during this period of of sort of casting around for a solution I got a phone call from a guy who I'd been dealing with at one of the comic book companies that, that I sold my higher end stuff. And he said, hey, I'm, I'm quitting my job. I want to go into business with you. What do you think? It's like, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> it's like, wow, that, that couldn't, I, I, I maybe gave probably one of the most important decisions any business person makes. Do I go into partnership with somebody or not? Which, you know, I, I, I absolutely strongly advise anyone watching this, be very careful about choosing business partners because it's fraught with, with peril. As the, this guy couldn't have been a more perfect fit for me and the timing couldn't have been better. I maybe considered it for three hours. I talked it over with my wife and said, yeah, this is what we, what we need to do and, and this guy's the perfect guy. So yeah, so it was like a beam of light came down and rescued me from myself. <laughs> well, those beams of light are often, as you talked earlier, you know, a sliding door. They really change the direction of the business. They kind of transform, um, you know, the future really for you and the family. How did the business grow? Are you able to articulate it in terms of traffic? You know, we've talked a, bit, a little bit about traffic, but not quantified it. And even if you're willing in terms of turnover and things like that. So somebody listening can get a sense of of what we're talking about here. Yeah, absolutely. So year one, I think I already mentioned that I was I was borrowing money to buy the wrong kind of stuff and not making a profit on it. So I, I lost thirty thousand dollars in year one. I strongly suggest that if you're going to go into similar kind of buying and selling business, you are very familiar with what you're buying before you start throwing serious money around. Um, and I would think from memory by the end of year one we were at about 150 unique visitors per day on the website i think it was year two 18 months into the project i went from 150 uniques a day to 600 uniques a day i think from from memory so my traffic quadrupled overnight and so when you look at my traffic curve uh you go back in history to the right to the beginning it's almost zero and suddenly it jumps in april 2014 I believe that would have been and then the following year again in April another big jump I think I was at 900 uniques a day at that point um, and so every year if, if I go back and do a comparison of the previous year uh, bearing in mind the big increase from the previous year which is already already to me seem like unbelievable the increase is, is exponential it, it seems to still be growing I, I believe from memory uh, the period of January to April 2018 is up 70% on, on the previous year. It's really worth pointing out for somebody that, that's watching this, that this is not paid traffic. This is organic traffic, right? Yes. Actually, I, I have experimented briefly with uh, Facebook ads, um, and I find that the ROI is not there for me. What we do is so specialized anyway that... I feel that 
people who come to our website already have an inherent distrust of the internet because they tend to be the boomer generation. Um, boomers seem to be split down the middle. They either love the internet or distrust it completely. And some of them have been scammed. Uh, some of them just hear the word scam and they think everything online is a scam. So they, they, they come very skeptical. So advertising to my target audience isn't necessarily the the pot of gold that everyone seems to think that Facebook ads or Google ads can be. Now, I'm not saying it won't work for everybody, but it didn't really work for us. Um, all our traffic is organic, pretty much like 90 odd percent of our traffic is organic. Some of it's direct because we have a, a mailing list of, I think about 8,000 people and that grows at a rate of like, I don't know, hundred a week or something. And we, we market to them, but very soft marketing. I'm not really trying to sell them anything anymore. I did for a while, but I find that it's better long-term to just keep them coming back to the site, keep them coming back to the site. Hey guys, have you seen this new article we just put up on strange tales? Come back to the site. And Google loves it when people come back regularly. And of course, the more articles they see, the better chance that they're going to share one of those articles to their friends on Facebook or wherever. And that just brings more traffic. So are you able to quantify in financial terms what this has meant to you so that somebody that's um, listening really gets a sense of this is a genuine business, not uh, some sort of fly-by-night deal? Yeah, absolutely. So when, when my business partner, Sean, and I started out, we, uh, we started, I believe it was the beginning of 2015, we started dabbling in some collections together where he was involved with his money and I was involved with my money. I can still remember the first big collection as us as partners um, was, was about 9,500 US dollars to buy it. And um, I remember struggling to get that money together. He couldn't come up with his half. And at the time, he was new to me, so I didn't really want to lend him money. It was a little awkward. It was a brand new partnership. Um, so I think I had to borrow some money from the bank or, or a line of credit or a credit card or something. So I put up two-thirds of the money. He put up one-third of the money. That was back in the beginning of 2015. Um, we had a conversation in September, no, maybe August of 2016, where Sean said, my basement is full of comics. We need help. We need staff. So he started because he's located in the States and all the comic books mostly in the world are in the States and it didn't make any sense to send them to Canada. So it became a natural progression that I would buy the stuff and it would be shipped to him and he'd sell it. And that's the business model we follow now. But he looked around for an office, found an office, started hiring staff. And we now have uh, four full time staff. Uh, we have three people who st sell stuff for us on eBay and one shipper. And then Sean is the manager of the office. He's there full time as well. So basically five full time staff, including Sean at the head office and then me uh, remotely located. And I don't know if anyone watching this has the the, the words digital nomad in their DNA. They, 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 they'd like the idea of taking their laptop and going to sit in a cafe somewhere in the world to do their, their daily work. Well, I basically am a digital nomad. I, I spent a week in Prague last year. I spent two weeks in Rome last year. I went to Guadeloupe last year. And everywhere I went, I had my laptop. My business didn't miss a beat. Um, and, uh, you know, I have my children here. Of course, I'm not going to just take off. But if, you know, my circumstance was slightly different, I could literally get on a plane and be anywhere in the world. And it wouldn't make a bit of difference to our business. Um, so to talk about financials, the first year of trading with an office was an exponential growth for us. We also got our biggest single comic comic book uh, sale to date, which is seventy one thousand US dollars for uh, Action Comics number seven, which is the second time that Superman appears on the cover. Um, it sold for seventy one thousand US dollars in January two thousand and sixteen. I think now it's, it's like time's passing very quickly. That year. Uh, January to December 2016, um, the company turned over, I believe it was um, $800,000 US. Um, and last year, we hit 1.4 million US. Um, the reason I started this, this, this conversation with the story about the 9,500, I think it was 40 US dollars that we struggled to come up with last year, we, we uh, spent over 600,000 US dollars purchasing collections. So um, the growth and, and the, some of the numbers to me are a little bit scary, actually. 
Um, but uh, it's just nice that things seem to just continue to roll. Um, I believe our, our, our projections for 2018 will be 1.7, 1.8 million US dollars in sales. Um, our traffic has gone from, I believe last year, I, uh, I'd have to double check, but from memory, we did 4,500,000 4, page views last year, and, and this year we're set to do 6 million. Just to bring it back to, to SBI and, and site sell and, and, and the, the services provided there, I was talking to somebody recently who actually has not dissimilar traffic, and they had a, I think it's a WordPress site, but they have to pay the bandwidth. So the cost of, of having that amount of traffic is quite substantial because, you know, it might be cheap to start, but as you grow, it gets more and more expensive. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month in, uh, in costs for bandwidth usage. What's the situation with, um, you know, as your traffic has increased with SBI? I haven't, I haven't <laughs> honestly, I haven't given it a thought because SBI bills me once a year and I've never had any requests for any additional fees for anything. Um, in my time, it's been, I think, 13 years with SBI. They've upgraded their tools and they've, I mean, it's, it's unrecognizable from the system it was when, when I was starting out. And the, the, not only have they not, not charged me extra for my success, if you want, want to call it that, um, like taxing me because I have high traffic or anything like that. But, um, the, the tool set is still the same price it was when I started. I mean, how many project products can you think of? You're still using from 13, 13 years ago at the same price today. I, I can't even think like go to McDonald's. I mean, the, the, the price of a burger has gone up eight times in that period or something. Um, there's no, there's no fees for extra traffic. There's no fees for having a big email list. There's there are no fees for anything as far as I know. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to think of, of anything. And and I have actually gone to the dark side and started uh, a WordPress site. And I have to tell you that my experience of it is, firstly, I didn't get traffic. Secondly, um, everything that looks good online on, on WordPress sites is a premium product. And you have to be prepared to spend money on, on a WordPress site, not even for traffic, just, just for things like templates that all the nicest ones are 40, 50, $60 and out of the box, they don't work. So you need to find a programmer to fix them for you. And it, it's just a bottomless pit of money. WordPress for me is, uh, it's a nice idea. And I think actually the way WordPress works the best is when you just want to have a little blog and you don't care about making money and you don't care who sees it. And all you want to do is just express yourself. A free WordPress site is the way to go with that. But as far as SBI is concerned, I'm still paying what I was paying uh, when I started this project in 2012. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm astonished they haven't put the price up, honestly. But uh, as far as the traffic, there's no, there's no cost for that. And not only is there no cost for bandwidth, but, you know, the conversions to HTTPS are all built in. There's no plug-in conflicts. There's no security issues. They've never crashed. You know, mm -hmm. the list can go on. And and talk to <laughs> talk to me about WordPress with that. Well, I I still have a WordPress site. It's called theashman.com. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how I, talk, I got talked into this, but I, I hired a coach which I will come back to later if we have time. And I think having a coach is a great thing for everybody. Um, but you need the right coach at the right time. And this coach said to me, oh, you should be building your personal brand. Uh, you know, Ashley Cotter Cairns is a brand. And it is, but it's a difficult brand to spell. So I, I came up with this 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 uh, domain, theashman.com, which is kind of easy enough to remember and say to people. Uh, and so I have a WordPress site. And... I have to tell you, every single day I get that email that says there's been five attempts to uh, to unsuccessful attempts to, to guess your password, so we've locked you out of the site. And I, I mean, this happens every day, uh, and all the time when when I do log in, the rare times I log in to update something, um, I have to download patches on all the different plugins, and and I, uh, it's it's beyond me. It's not it's not what I'm I'm about. My my. My prime objective is creating content and, and all the stuff that you have to deal with on WordPress just gets in the way of that. 
So actually, you've really opened another sliding door there, which opens uh, the conversation up about who you need to be in order to have a successful business. For somebody starting out right now, you know, they may just have a half an idea or they may have a little hobby that they're interested in and, you know, perhaps can only dedicate a few hours a week. But to make that growth and to that make that commitment, there needs to be some really probably important personality traits to take into account. Can you talk about your own experience? Yeah, I can. I think that the most important thing to, to have is a vision. And if you want to dream about something, dream of success, don't dream small, dream big. I always used to say if you aim high and you miss, you at least hit below the high heights that you were aiming at. So you probably aim a hit higher than if you aim low and then you miss, you know, hit the floor. I think you have to be completely dedicated to, to whatever it is that you want to do. That's why having multiple projects at once didn't really work for me and probably can't really be sustained for very long. And I think you need to just have that dream every day. You wake up and you think to yourself, I know exactly what I'm doing today. That's why having a blueprint is so important because it keeps you on track and keeps you focused. And, and whenever you have a question in your mind, what am I doing next? You shouldn't have that question for very long. Uh, some of the most famous successful people talk about limiting the amount of choices they have because choice takes up energy. You know, Steve Jobs famously wore the same clothes every day. Um, some, I think it was Woody Allen had the same meals every day. Every, every breakfast, lunch and dinner was exactly the same meal every day in the same place. So he didn't have to make a ch stupid choice that would take energy away from his passion. And most of all, when you get up in the morning and you just want to be successful you know the first thing you're going to do when your feet hit the floor and you've got coffee in your system is you sit down and you get on with it i say like people ask me why do you wear superhero t-shirts i said i my project is next to my heart all the time and deep down inside i'm batman and my bat cave is sbi my batmobile is my laptop and that's the way to be successful is to just say justice never sleeps well on that Fabulous note. That's a great place to end this interview. I really thank you for your inspiring message and for your experience. I think there's a, a lot anybody can learn, whether they're at the beginning, halfway through, or even close to where you are now in your own business. Thanks very much for your time. And I hope somebody has really enjoyed this. Thank you. And if you do have vintage comic books, please check out sellmycomicbooks.com.